up how is everyone doing hope you're doing good this is the uh free mentorship hour i do every wednesday from my warehouse right here in southeastern michigan it's a bit chilly i have the heat on don't worry but uh i'm still a little bit cold you guys cold where is it how's the weather where you're at where are you at let me uh shout out where you're from and uh, any questions you have, this might be a bit of a truncated version of the live stream uh, because I got things to do, but I always want to make sure that I'm here for you guys to give you uh, whatever answers to questions you need. So we have Shannon Baldwin, uh, Frank Hernandez, uh, let's see, Jacqueline, Heather Flip the World in Houston. How is the temperature in Houston? I bet it's warmer than here. It's cold in Michigan. That's a recurring theme. Uh-oh. Too many wires. So we got, uh, yeah, Flip the World says it's 77. Oh, it's freezing. Yeah, sure, dude, sure. Logan Altenberger, DIY Gemini, uh, L. Richardson. Nice. It's snowing in Philly. I'm going to Philly in 12 days. We got Thomas in New Jersey. How is everyone doing? Good? Hopefully good. <laughs> yeah, someone says 55 in Memphis, and then it's 34 wherever Michelle is. Michelle, are you in Michigan? Because it's like 34 here too. It's been very, very chilly, very cold, very dark, very dreary. Not the kind of weather I enjoy to exist in. Why your girlfriend never helped with your Amazon business? She was on the TV show, but she doesn't come in the warehouse because she uh, has her master's degree in, uh, in a science-related field, and so she is a scientist, and uh, she likes doing that. Hey, WBK from Effingham, Illinois, 55, got a heat wave going, 56 in Colorado Springs in sunny, oh, I'm so jealous. Michelle's in the mountains of Maryland, and it's about the same. You know, I, I bet that uh, the, what is that? Central Maryland? Central North, North, uh, North Midwest Maryland? Probably very similar weather as southeastern Michigan, although the scenery is a bit nicer where you are. I stopped at a, at a brewery in northern Maryland. I was driving from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia, and I went down south too far on whatever roads there are over there, and I stopped by a brewery in Maryland, and it had, like, this overview of a mountain. And I did not know that there was, like, ski resorts in Maryland. But there are. Sure enough, there are. Or there were, at least. They might be uh, going out of fashion if there's no snow. But sounds like it's getting cold again. So uh, just whatever questions you guys have about how to make money online in 2021, I want to help answer those. Uh, I'm thinking about doing, like, a hard... I, I don't want to call it a reset, but just, like, starting over a new... Uh, FBA account with a new um, business and just like show the steps through that step by step by step because I feel like maybe every year I should do that if I'm trying to transition more to being a teacher of this stuff then I can afford to make a new business every year just to restart and say hey here's how I'm doing it here's how we're exploring you know a private label business on Amazon um, just the you know I have the time to do it now so uh, or at least I have like the mental space to do it now so why not do that? Um, for Amazon FBA, what cat what categories are gated when you first begin? That's what I don't know. That's why I want to like kind of start over because I don't know those answers anymore. You know, I, I haven't started an Amazon account for years and years and years, so I don't know what the current restrictions are. So I'd still have my current account that I use as for like, you know just the things that I do thrifting, but then have a secondary account that I that I share with you guys because as you know I don't like to share. My account name is just because all it takes is one person in a bad mood to, you know, give you an A to Z claim that can screw your account over. And I had that happen to me. I actually had an A to, a to Z account withdrawn and then automatically put back into place. So I, I can have no more defects on my regular account um, for the next 35 days. Uh, or I guess I can. You can have up to 1%. So it isn't that big of a deal, but it's still, you don't want to have that stuff. Uh, question, have you heard about the TV show, second season? I watched the ratings, I checked the ratings every week, and it was like, about, you know, out of probably the, the 
66th percentile of, of all the shows in terms of like rating. It was getting like average A and E uh, rating. So I don't know if they're going to want to do it again because it involves sending a film crew around the country, and I'm not sure with COVID stuff if they're going to want to do that again. But I also did get an email like f- two or three days ago with my updated tax information from the pr- production company who paid me for to be in the show. So um, I don't know. I don't know how, where that stands. Is it true that Amazon is overly saturated with sellers? No. And will soon be taken over by another merchant? No, that's not true. Uh, Thrift to Quit says, how's shipping going for you? I saw Detroit had trucks lined up just to get to the main postal center. Uh, you know, since March, shipping has been bad. So I, I changed my shipping to like 10-day shipping, economy shipping on Amazon, and that's what I've been doing. And it's I'm sure I've lost some sales because the... um. Estimated day is too far away for delivery, but better than having, you know, a bunch of angry customers. Richard Gobbles says, or Gobbles, this is my first Q4. I've been doing this for about two months now. I've been averaging two to six sales a day. So it really depends what category you're in. I mean, if you want to be selling like number one, number, you know, the top 1% or the top tenth of a percent of any uh category that's got a lot of items in it like books or like video games or uh over-the-counter medicine for example you're gonna sell a lot more than two to six things a day but if you're doing like um you know clearance item that kind of stuff you're just doing regular thrifting uh i don't yeah you I, you didn't say if you're doing retail arbitrage or just selling uh anything you can uh two to six sales a day is not bad um but it's not like what you should expect if you're really going hard at it either. You can do a lot more than that. Uh, Tierra says, is selling books still profitable? Yes. And where would be the best place to find bulk lots? So I would reach out to uh, whatever the largest city in your area is. They're going to have like a regional Goodwill and Salvation Army hub um, where they're going to sell pallets of items, Gaylords of items. Uh, And they're probably going to sell books by the truckload. Maybe if you're lucky, they'll sell them uh, by the pallet. If you can't do that, uh, I've noticed that bstocksupply.com has some uh, book pallets for sale, but I don't know if they've been picked over uh, or, or how good they are. They're a bit more expensive than I would like to pay for book pallets, uh, but if you're, you know, if that's your only option, that's your only option. You can also just put on like, you know, check Facebook for free books being given away, uh, and put out flyers and put out ads saying that you will remove books for free because there are a lot of people who have a lot of books who just want to get rid of them. Uh, and don't really know or care if they're worth any money. Let's see. I've tried selling dish detergent Dollar Tree, but I have not made a cent, says Dale. You're going to have to try new products then, because there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of different ASINs for uh, dish soap. So uh, just trying one is not good enough to say it doesn't work for you. Mishmash Outlet says, I would like to know more about uh, sales rank on Amazon. Do you have a cheat sheet of ranks per category? I don't. Um, those get put out by lots of people, you know, every few months or so. Uh, you can just check to see how often the item sells, um, on Keepa. If you want to know, like, a general idea for books, I say, and these are just numbers for beginners, because if you're not a beginner, then you should know how to find this out yourself. Um, but if you don't know how to find out yourself, you just need, like, basic numbers. Uh, for books, stay under a million. For video games, stay under 45, 40,000. For grocery, stay under eighty thousand. For electronics, stay under a quarter million, two fifty k. What other category? For CDs, stay below about a hundred thousand. For DVDs, stay below one hundred fifty thousand. Um, those are the main categories that I sell in, so I can tell you that off the top of my head. Just got ungated in a. Uh, let's see. Flip the world says we have FedEx, UPS hiring people to deliver packages in personal vehicles. And they're renting U-Haul trucks. Yeah, same up here. The UPS is renting out any truck they can get their hands on. I saw them driving a uh, like a flatbed, not a flatbed, but like a, a, a box truck, basically, for a, um, a landscaping company. I'm sure they're just renting it out to make money that way, which is, you know, good, fine. That's great. Maybe we should all start buying trucks and renting them out to UPS. Stacy Vasquez says, just got ungated in both grocery and topicals, but now not sure what products to start with other than the one I had to buy to get ungated. What else should I look for? Just go to Walmart and just start scanning barcodes, um, and you will start finding things that sell for a profit. 
Uh, let's see. Robert, the user says, I heard Kroger started allowing third-party sellers non-food items. Are you going to look into selling there? No, probably not. Um, I'm moving away from, like, the wholesale model of business, uh, or at least, like, the multiple marketplace model of business, just because I, I want more time to focus on doing YouTube stuff uh, and having my website and, you know, writing articles for that and making more courses. And, um... I don't really have any desire to form a company where I manage people and they do the individual uh, buying and selling on these other marketplaces. Beginner with little fun, so I may get five to ten sales a month. Is that good or bad? Asks Heather. Uh, for me, that's bad. For you, it sounds like it's good. So it's not really a matter of is it good or bad. It's a matter of is it working for you. Uh, if that's working for you, it's working for you. If it's not, it's not. Some people think a thousand sales a month is bad. Some people think five sales a month is good. It's there's not any like there's no um, like right or wrong. There's like not an answer sheet or an answer key or whatever um, for questions like that. I did the book removal. It worked until the snow came. Says Firecrest talking about getting free books. The region flipper says where did the customers go? Sales are down. If you're not selling stuff in Q4, you've got issues. Uh, you've got issues with your products because I am selling more things than ever. Ricky Hart just sent us 20 bucks. He says, I've been following you since August. Thank you for all you provide to the community. I'd like to contribute to the Holiday Cider Fun. Ricky Hart, thank you very, very much. And uh, for those of you who are new, when we get Super Chats, we uh, we hit, I think it's an egret. I'm pretty sure this is an egret. So we got two. So we're going to do two back-to-back uh, -back little dings uh, and the money bell. Ready? This one's, for, one's, one's uh, first one's for Ricky. That's a good one. And the second one is for Jacqueline saying, thank you for all you do. Jacqueline and Ricky, thank you all very much. And that's uh, two dings for both of you. Two very generous super chats. And if we do happen to hit 50 bucks, I've got the, uh, the money bugle. And this will uh, destroy all your eardrums. Guaranteed. So where were we? I wanted to just say thanks. Well, that's still, uh, that's still showing up. Um, we were talking, so let's see, how did you get ungated? What website did you use? Asks Wick City. Uh, I would not recommend paying to get ungated. You can just buy, um, if you want to get ungated in topicals, you can go to, uh, Malincho.com. You can go to pretty much any C store distributor and buy sunscreen for topicals. Um, you can buy toothpaste from them, from a lot of them. So don't spend like a thousand bucks to get engaged. It's a, it's a, uh, not a good uh, investment in my opinion. So uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people who make videos on YouTube are just trying to sell you courses or ungating services or whatever it is. And a lot of those are uh, unnecessary. So not all of them are unnecessary, but a lot of them you don't need to pay for. And they're just really trying to look for a few suckers who will spend a lot of money uh, and make up for their, um, you know, make up for not having a very good product. This week is dead week pile for me. No new sourcing until I put a dent in it. Wish me luck, says Jacqueline. Jacqueline, good luck, and that's a good thing to do. Good thing to take a few weeks off once in a while and uh, work through your death pile because if it gets bigger and bigger, you got to buy a warehouse like me. And uh, it's a waste of money to have a warehouse like this. Mishmash says, I started with eBay, but it seems like there are too many scammers. Or spoiled customers, maybe? Probably. I mean, you know, what's too much? If you get 10% spoiled customers, that's 1 in 10 uh, you know, some might say it's good, some might say it's bad. If you're gonna, if you're doing like a PS5, of course you're more likely to get bullshit customer. But I mean, that's just that's the way it goes. They want to return and claim defective and doesn't seem worth it. Is Amazon better than eBay? I would say you're definitely gonna have a, the same issues on Amazon than eBay. Um, you know, times are economically tough right now, so uh, there are a lot of people looking to scam people and make money, and especially when you have so many state governments talking about, you know, quote-unquote price gouging, that they're going to really complain about any any price uh, at all that they think is too high, which is, uh, which is pretty stupid. And uh, I really personally blame a lot of our state governments for um, inciting this kind of terrible, entitled behavior. I am here to be mentored, says Bearded Picker, old grandmaster of flipping. Well, good to have you here. Hope it's all good down there in, uh, down there in uh, Alabama. Have you heard of the Amazon guru, Sophie Howard? No. She says you have to invest $5,000 for a bulk order to sell on Amazon. No, that is not accurate. 
How do you spell that? Is it Malencho? Montgomery, it's Malencho. Malencho.com. They specialize in Bulgarian imports. Um, so you can do grocery. You can do topicals there. I don't know how well they're going to sell, but you're going to get ungated, and they're not going to charge you a huge amount. Uh, let's see. Tamika, the coupon and camper lady, says, If I donate to a women's shelter... What kind of paperwork should I use to follow that donation? I would ask the women's shelter uh, because they're going to know a lot more than me about what that uh, has to do, especially as in, you know, if they're in your state, which they obviously are. I found a lot of games while I'm cleaning out my storage, used in great condition games, Wii, Xbox, PlayStation, so on. Any advice on how to list and where? You can list them on Amazon just by scanning the barcode. Uh, make sure the discs are not scratched. You're going to get returns if they're scratched, but besides that, should be uh, a pretty good a good find. Richard says, I got my first refund on FBA. Buyer said, wrong item shipped. What do I do now? Uh, you really can't do anything. You're going to get the product sent back to you, uh, and then you're going to find out if they scammed you or if it really was the wrong item sent. If it's FBA uh, shipment, depending on what the actual specifics of the return were, you might get it reimbursed. Or you might just uh, misunderstand um, what happened and not get reimbursed. Top 5 Zone says, what will we learn today? You'll learn a lot of stuff, Top 5 Zone. Don't worry. Peter says, afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's see. Do you have to pay taxes when doing FBA? Yes. Any money you make, you have to pay taxes on. You can't. There's no such thing as, like, money you, do, you don't pay taxes on. Um, you know, that's... Uh, I'm not sure who told you that, that you don't pay taxes on certain money you make, but the government would like a word. <laughs> They're going to do what they can to squeeze every dollar they can out of you. Heather says, have you heard the Amazon selling family? They sell courses that are supposed to get you ungated. Uh, I don't think that's good. I think that anyone who has a desire to sell on Amazon should just do the research themselves. Uh, I think the selling family might have been on the show with me. I'm not sure. Um, they're good people, but I just don't recommend doing that because if you really want to sell on Amazon, you're going to have to do a lot of the research yourself just to learn your niches, to learn where, you know, things are selling. And if you can't go out of your way to find wholesalers and you're not going to be successful at this, you're just going to waste money. Uh, I cannot miss my WBK mentorship hour, says Michelle's guide to life. Don't worry. Uh, we're, we're still here and we're only 17 minutes in. We have a hundred thumbs or hundred, hundred watchers. So let's give some thumbs up right here. Hopefully the advice uh, I'm giving you is uh, helpful and you'll make some money off of it. Uh, if you get an FBA return where the customer destroys the package, is there anything you can do to get some money back or anything like that? You just talk it up as a loss. You used to be able to get money back, but like a year and a half ago, Amazon changed their policy. Um, potentially, if there's any evidence that the packaging was destroyed in shipping, and you shipped it with insurance, and don't forget that Priority Mail has uh, insurance built into it, um, you might be able to get money, but uh, probably not. Montgomery, uh, Amazon will collect and submit taxes for you for another 2.9%. Uh, I don't, does the, I don't think the Amazon tax nexus costs money on you, but I guess, are you referring to their payment processing fee? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Baskets Resale says, Thanks for all the knowledge, Walter. I've added at least 600 plus a month to my sales after watching your book videos. I sell magazines now as well, which are fast sellers. Good to hear, Baskets. I'm happy that my advice is making you some money. H Hippolito Torres says, Hi, hello, Hippolito. We have Creatively Smart in the chat. Uh, what's up, everyone? If you're new here, please remember subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up uh, I icon and the bell icon so you can be uh, notified. Although, uh, probably the best way is just to come on here at noon uh, every Wednesday. I'm, I'm on here. I was here a little bit late today, 1 p.m. I got I have some work to do, unfortunately. It's Q4, a lot of busy stuff going on. But every Wednesday at noon uh, or around, you know, in the noon to 2 o'clock hour, I'm always going to be on here. Uh, answering your questions, although I guess probably, I say always, uh, I'm going to have to, maybe I won't. I'll see if I can I can um, go live or not. If I can't go live, it would it would be, I'm going to Philadelphia on the 19th, that's a Friday, so uh, I think that's a Friday or is it a Saturday? Maybe it falls on Christmas, who knows. 
What day is Christmas? What day is Christmas on? This, well, duh, but like what day of the week? Why, why would they ever do that? Uh, Friday. So I will not be live December 23rd, um, which is Christmas week. Because I'll be in Philadelphia at my girlfriend's house. And I'm not going to have the things that I need. Maybe I'll go in my car and do it for a little bit. But I don't, don't get your hopes up. Thomas says, my next learning hurdle is to buy products that are in more demand. I purchased toys, including Legos, Playmobil action figures, and listed November 1st on eBay. Still no takers. I would lower your price if you're worried about them not selling, uh, because if you don't ship it out, you know, by probably December 18th, uh, that would be like, probably, that's, I think that's the day that they recommend you ship it out by, but things are going to be delivered late this year. So you might even want to be uh, shipping out before December 18th. Maybe 15th is a good uh, rule for you. Uh, let's see. Creatively Smart says, just got approved to sell. I have about 40 Dollar Tree books to start. What is a good second product to look at? Besides Dollar Tree books, try thrift store books. If you want uh, something beyond books, uh, video games are a good easy beginner one. CDs, uh, DVDs, and Amazon are going to be gated, so you might have to do that. I was on eBay if you find any of those. Uh, you know, old electronics like... Um, you know, Sony, uh, well, those are going to be gated for you. Uh, if you're new, let, let's just stick to books and video games and maybe some toys if you're in gated for those. Hey, we got five bucks from Fast Travel. Five bucks from Fast Travel. Five Canadian dollars. Thank you very much. And uh, Fast Travel says, how do you contact a distributor? I send emails. I've been sending applications, but they're not responding. I'm looking to get into wholesale toys to sell on Amazon. So I bet they're not responding because it's the middle of Q4. Um, definitely reach out to them again in like uh, March. Um, if they don't answer your emails, you can always do a phone call. I like I hate phone calls, but obviously a phone call is going to be a more direct line than an email. So thank you for the super chat fast travel. Let's see. Uh, I just sent in coffee pods in PFRE. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, and they claim some damaged. I asked for picks, and they sent pick of seven pods slightly damaged. The PFRE is pristine, no damage from picture. Can I file a claim with UPS? Um, you can file a claim, whether you win it or not. I don't know. That's going to depend on uh, what P. What, what I don't know what PFRE even is. PFRE is it? Oh, priority mail padded flat rate envelope yeah you're probably not going to get your money back if you sent k cups in a flat rate envelope i would guess um i generally am not using flat rate envelopes for anything that like can be crushed uh because if you've watched how they do this stuff they just toss the flat rate envelopes into a giant 10 foot gaylord basically uh and then a lot of things can fall on top of it um when I shipped out those 10-pound plates, I shipped out a lot of those in flat-rate padded mailers. And uh, they I probably had like a 60% success rate, so a 40% failure rate. Luckily, all of those did get reimbursed. Um, but I don't know if they're going to reimburse like box damage like that um, on K-cups when you ship them in a, 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 a padded, padded flat-rate mailer. Uh, Steve Palomino says, I just subscribed, Live, love your content, and left a like. Thank you, Steve, and while everyone is here, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I don't know, if you're not subscribed, which I bet you already all are, uh, do that right now. D. Irvin says, new to your channel, you rock. Thank you, D. Irvin. Stacy says, is it a good idea to list USPS shipping deadlines in my eBay listings, or is that just a waste of time? So I wouldn't list it because it's probably wrong. <laughs> they're probably going to be, if you list it, that's almost like you guaranteeing that they're going to be uh, correct. So I would not even include that. I would just say, make sure you order early because things are being delayed. Do you have any videos on how to make an Amazon account to sell? I do not have one on how to start off, but I think I might do one next year. I think I'm going to start uh, a new private label brand, and I think to do that, I'm going to have its own account. So I'll show you guys probably, who knows when, but sometime next year. 
Uh, can you post a link to a video showing how to use Read Profit Bandit, please, on the book topic Tech General Check Dollar General Books for just one dollar? Uh, says Tatiana. Tatiana, I pretty much any of my Dollar Tree book videos are gonna have uh, Profit Bandit. Um, it really is not that complicated. You just you just scan the barcode, and it shows you the FBA price, the MF price, uh, if Amazon is on the listing. You can also use the Amazon Seller app. That used to be a pretty far, far behind, but now I'd say it's essentially as good as Profit Bandit in almost every way. It doesn't look as nice, and it, and it doesn't cost as much, but um, it gives you the same information. In some cases, Profit Bandit is a bit more efficient, but not always. Uh, why do some items on pallet? Why do some items on a pallet manifest sometimes just say heyday? So do you mean like general? Because I don't think they say heyday in any kind of like universal sense. Um, sometimes the pallet manifest will just say like general returns, uh, and that's because they uploaded a, a, a you know a file. It really depends on what uh, platform you're buying your merchandise on for pallets. Uh, some are going to have different requirements for what you have to upload. Uh, like on bulk.com, they do all of their own manifests, and sometimes they just say general merchandise. Uh, sometimes they'll on like bstocksupply.com, they're going to say no manifest. Um, if it says hey, that doesn't mean anything special, and it might even be a, uh, a typo. Uh, hey, I just watched one of Everyday FBA's videos about getting engaged on toys without invoice. Do all sellers get the maximum approval? Probably not. Uh, there are very few like constants on Amazon. Uh, pretty much everything is based on your account. How did your life change if it did after being on the TV show? Asks Mark. It did not change at all. I want to start a food delivery business on Amazon. I want to sell pizza and lasagna through Amazon. Is this profitable? Asks Dale. So if it's frozen, that's not going to work, um, just because selling frozen items on Amazon is a nightmare. Uh, so I'm going to say no, it's not going to work. If you want to sell lasagna and pizza, you probably don't have to use a website like Amazon. You can just do your own. You can set up, set up a, a business on DoorDash, you know, and deliver from your house if, it, if it's allowed in your area. Probably what you are trying to do is not uh, feasible or realistic. So I would, I would pivot away from trying to sell lasagna on Amazon uh, unless you found a way to like keep lasagna shelf stable without uh, temperature control. Thrift Quit says, assuming you were ungated, would you sell everything you can on Amazon? If so, would you avoid selling on Amazon and selling on eBay instead? No, I prefer Amazon to eBay and I am ungated in a lot of stuff that I don't sell. I don't sell hairspray, for example. I don't sell underwear, for example, and it's, there's no reason in particular. I just don't want to, you know, it doesn't interest me, so I don't do it. Uh, for UPC labels, what is a company you would recommend for Amazon? Also, as a first-time Amazon seller, how many items can we send to a warehouse FBA? Thank you. It's going to depend on what your storage limits are. Uh, that's going to depend on, on your account, uh, basically. I'm not sure what the Q4 storage limits are for new sellers. Uh, in regards to getting a UPC label, what I would recommend you do is get the G10 exception, exemption from Amazon. Uh, and, and for that, you're going to have to have your own brand. But it's a lot more, I think it's a better process than just like buying random UPC labels and creating new products. A lot more um, safeguarded against people hijacking your listing. Solar Flower says, can you sell a book on Amazon if the author or publisher has already listed it? You can, but I wouldn't do it. Uh, no, the lasagna and pizza is going to be cooked. So you want to, Dale is saying he wants to sell cooked pizza on Amazon. Okay, Dale, good luck with that. Hippolito Torres says, I live in Buffalo, New Jersey. You think the COVID aller is going to affect Amazon selling? What will you think? So uh, the lockdowns and the restrictions and all that stuff has been affecting Amazon since March. And I have no doubt it will continue to, uh, to do that um, until, I would guess, until next fall, to, you know, to be quite honest. I don't have any faith in, uh, <laughs> in having a, uh, what's it called, anytime soon. 
There's no town in Buffalo, New Jersey. They must be in New York. Yeah, I figured he, that was a typo, but I'm just going to read off the comments as they come. So uh, who else is here? We've got 111 viewers. Uh, we're talking about ways to make money online in 2020. We can talk about websites. We can talk about private labeling. We can talk about affiliate marketing. We can talk about YouTube. We can talk about just your own business you want to have. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to do, really, um, let me know. Uh, because I probably have had some uh, similar experience to it, uh, if not exact experience. We have got 69 thumbs up, so quick, give it a thumbs up. Let's try and get above 100 thumbs up before we get off here. We're only at a half hour into the show, so uh, you know probably we'll go until 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Uh, let's see. DJ Foucher says, any Facebook uh, and Mercari tips? Um, you know, it's pretty much the same everywhere. Uh, there's not really anything that works on Mercari that doesn't work on eBay or Amazon or vice versa. Mercari is just, I like Mercari. It used to be that there was a lot younger audience on there. Um, not like, not selling like hypebeast stuff, but just like selling, um, you know, that they, they would just, younger people I noticed. Uh, so I liked that for like video game lots and, and cool t-shirts that weren't really any nam name brand. But now I haven't really noticed much of a difference in buying patterns. I've noticed that things go for a bit more in Mercari than eBay, maybe 10% more. Um, yeah, that's, I guess that's my, my, my tips are, uh, on Mercari, don't do the $20 USPS or UPS shipping. It's a rip off. Box it yourself. Steve Palomino says, for private branding on Amazon, do you have to register your business as a DBA or LLC? So they don't have this distinction of DBA versus LLC. It has to be, I would recommend, it's its own entity. Um, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know why you wouldn't do an LLC. It seems like that's a lot of risk. You're, 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 I think, actually, you might even have to have an LLC now that I think about it um, to have to, to satisfy their recommendations, not to do it uh the only reason you wouldn't do an llc is if you wanted to save like 150 bucks which is not a, if you're doing private labeling and you can't spend 150 bucks on legal zoom buying a new llc then you need to reassess what you're doing is it allowed to sell adult magazines like playboy penthouse hustler on ebay or amazon fba uh i'm pretty sure that there are playboy i know that you can on, on ebay playboy magazine Amazon. Let me see if there are any for sale. It looks like there are. Yeah, there definitely are Playboy magazines uh, for sale on Amazon. Um, I don't know if they have any rules about other uh, publications, um, but it looks like uh, there definitely are some for sale. So if someone else is selling them, you can too. Uni McClaney says, yes, I have Playboy listed on Amazon. So there's your answer. Yes, you can. Excuse me. What is the easiest and best thing? I hate questions like that because there's no answer. There's no easiest and best thing. It depends on who you are. To sell on Amazon outside of books. You know, are you a paraplegic? Then it's going to be Amazon merch. Like, do you have access to a bunch of VCRs? Then it's going to be VCRs. Like, it's, it's whatever you have access to and is in your area that you can easily source and sell is going to be the best and easiest thing. So you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error, Ron. Beauty of Sound says, I started listing number of items to match the date. Like today, I'll list nine items on eBay. A little trick to motivate me. That might get tough, though, come December 30th. Do you think there will be free removals anytime soon? Asks Michelle. Yeah, probably. You know, in the next six months, I bet there is going to be. Artist Group, do you know anything about Skillshare? I know a RN who is interested in using it for work. I do not know anything about Skillshare, except that it's like a online, you know, like a greatest courses plus type place or Linda, I think is another option where they just kind of like teach you basic skills. I need online opportunities worldwide rather than only in the U.S., uh, I don't know that much about other countries, uh, online options, but I do know that the best way to make money is to make money in the United States. 
Uh, so I would focus on, on having like a content website in the U S uh, or at least utilizing like, um, the United States market because there's going to be such higher ad rates than on, uh, in, in India, for example. I'm not Nipsey now, but you always got my support, says Traveling Solo Logs. Thrift to Quit says, do you send your used electronics into FBA or sell them FBM? Uh, so, I, uh, let's see. I FBA small electronics, and I FBM larger, heavier electronics. We strayed. We started watching you in October and began sending in books in FBA and selling on eBay. We have made 900 bucks in 90 days. Now on eBay, we're selling items from estate sales. Thank you for the inspiration. Uni McLeany, good job. Round of applause for you. That's awesome to hear. It sounds like you're taking the advice from these videos and these live streams and uh, applying them uh, to your own life. So what else do we have? Yuri says, long time no see. Yuri, good to have you here. Any other questions? I am here to answer them for you. Where do you, where do you sell more, Amazon or eBay? I sell more on Amazon. Do you ever sell items on Facebook Marketplace? No, I don't like people coming to my warehouse. I don't like that. Um, I don't like just random people walking up and looking at my doors. I don't like that. Uh, it's fine to do, you know, I have before, but just I don't like to do it right now. Did you get your reseller's license right away or wait to see how it went and get it later? Just wondering if I need one now or I can wait. You can wait. If you have one, you're gonna be able to save on sales tax, uh, but you're also gonna be paying quarterly taxes. Firecrest, I ship a ton on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, in a lot of areas over the past six months, uh, Facebook Marketplace has begun offering shipping as an option. Um, I haven't looked into it just because I still don't, you know, I just don't want to deal with it. Yesterday I sold my most expensive cassettes yet. I sold the pre-owned cassette of the Smiths for $75 to someone on Australia on eBay. Wow. Good job. New Jersey, that's a very expensive cassette and that just shows you you can make money selling a lot of stuff. You, if you don't like books, you can sell CDs or DVDs or cassettes. And this is on eBay, not on Amazon. A lot of those more uh, rare VHS tapes, a lot of like the rare cassettes, a lot of the rare vinyl is gonna be totally fine on eBay. The boring CDs, the boring DVDs, you know, stuff like, um, like this DVD, for example, Chuck Norris Top Dog, might not make as much on, on eBay as it will on Amazon. Just because for those, I don't want to call them like essential DVDs, but just the, the basic DVDs, the, the non-rare DVDs, the mass-produced DVDs, uh, the search traffic is more likely to go to Amazon than eBay for those. Do you believe in aliens? Asks Bearded Picker. Did you see the Israeli general come out and say aliens are helping the U.S. and Israel? I do believe in aliens in the sense that I think that there is some sort of intelligent life outside of humans. Uh, do I believe what an Israeli general said? Nah, uh, probably not. Um, I don't, you know, it could be true. Uh, you know, it could be propaganda. It could be just a crazy person looking for some attention. Uh, I think that if there were aliens helping the United States and Israel, that there would probably be evidence of that. <laughs> there really isn't. Um, so I'm not really taking their word for it. Evidence, like, we would have... Uh, giant jumps in technology that can't be explained. Sean Weber says, sold a Los Angeles baseball hat for 650 bucks on eBay. A Los Angeles Dodgers hat. Wow, good job, Sean. That's a great sale. Uh, used cookbooks are selling fast on eBay right now. Woohoo! Solar Flower sent us five bucks. Thank you, Solar Flower. That was a very delicate day. For a delicate flower, I guess. I don't know. Sabina says, I almost missed it. Happy Wednesday. Sabina, happy Wednesday to you too. Prestige Motors says, hey, WBK, uh, watch your channel a year ago. Always seen commercials for Amazon 
and different platforms always found them to be BS. When I seen some of your videos, I got some courage. Well, I'm glad that I could help you get some courage and, uh, and start doing it. What do you do with the extra cash off profits? Profits asks Yuri. I invest a little bit of it. I save a little. I'm buying a house next summer, so it's going into the down payment on that. Just goes into a a savings account for the most part. I invest a small amount of my income, you know, just like 10%, but not nothing huge. Kaz Bury says, "What methods would you recommend to make an extra thousand dollars a month?" I would recommend that you do a resale. That's going to be the easiest way to get to that amount. Um, as quickly as possible. It's going to take you, I'd say it'll take you four, three or four months to get there, but it's pretty easy. James Hancock says, do you offer free shipping for books? I do because it's going to be media mail shipping. So media mail shipping is always going to be very, very predictable. Larry says, uh, anybody having packages getting stuck in Detroit? Yes. There, I've had a priority shipment there for 10 days. Buyer getting frustrated. Yeah, that's, that's the way it goes, man. Uh, I don't understand anyone who's getting frustrated because it's been like this since March. So, you know, I'm sorry you got customers who uh, don't know what's going on in the world right now. L. Richardson says, yep, just sold two vintage cookbooks in Mercari, one for $50. Wow, I got to check, uh, check my cookbooks because I do have a few over there. First time live viewer, shipping is so expensive for us, says Chris's Variety Channel. Chris, where are you at? Maybe I can offer some advice to uh, help lower that cost. Caitlin Wallace says, I have watched all of the TV series and I've been watching your videos since late 2018. You, sir, are an inspiration. Caitlin, thank you very much for watching the channel and watching the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Sabina says, that's good to hear about cookbooks. I got to get mine enlisted. You do, Sabina. Go get it. Let's see. That's uh, Prestige Motors says, started with 200 bucks borrowed. Made my first 5K the following month. Lost my mind. That's good ROI. Glad to hear it, man. Uh, Chris is a variety channel. Says I'm in Ohio. Chris, if you're in Ohio and things still cost a lot to ship, how are you shipping them? Because if you're in the United States, you should be getting USPS low priority, you know, rates. Um, what are you using Pirate Shipper to ship if you're selling on eBay? Because I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that eBay has per cubic uh, priority mail shipping right now. Um, and Pirate Shipper does. What do you do, John King Bookstore on Fort Street? Uh, I don't go there anymore. I don't live in Detroit anymore. I live in Ipsy now. But you could totally go there. The issue with John King is they sell their books for kind of a lot of money. Um, I'd recommend going to like Salvation Armies or Goodwills and looking for books that are below a dollar. Kaz Bury says, thank you. I will do some research on how to start selling. Just get started, Kaz. Download Mercari and list your first thing. Uh, check your six. Hustler says, someone sold something on Mercari. That's a miracle. I sell things on Mercari. Uh, I think the things that you're selling is the issue, not everyone else. Kevin Harkin says, I thought USPS upped their rates for the holidays so they can hire more people and these massive delays wouldn't happen. Uh, no. That was never... They never said it was so delays wouldn't happen. <laughs> I, don't, I think that was what you may have assumed, but they never said that. Uh, and they really didn't, in my opinion, and I, I, I made this uh, vocal on the channel, they did not raise rates enough. We, you know, USPS should cost probably 40% more than it, than it does right now uh, just because they're constantly understaffed and constantly just like scraping by. So why not up the rates to a point where it makes... Um, you know, where it's sustainable. Uh, a lot of people complain about, oh, they have to be responsible for, for 30 years of pension debt or whatever the number is. And yeah, they do. Um, so why not have the, uh, why not have the correct prices? Mishmash Outlet says, should we switch to UPS and FedEx? Uh, I, you know, I think everyone is delayed. There's no, there's no solution. If you're in an area that has, a lot of restrictions on how many people can be in any space and who can work and you know if you have a fever everyone has to go home and that kind of stuff then there's it doesn't matter who you use they're all subject to the same restrictions bearded picker says ebay does not have cubic priority rates correct so yeah um that'd be my only advice to you chris's variety channel if you're selling on ebay 
and you uh, are paying too much for priority mail shipping, uh, integrate Pirate Shipper to eBay, and you should get lower rates there. Let's see. Goodwill has good books for good prices, says Caitlin Wallace. What are you, a shill? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. How do you figure out if you are buying a product to sell at a good price? Uh, asks Kaz. Kaz, so I have a channel on that. Um, I also have this. It's I'll, I'll link to it, wbkultra.com slash FAQ. That's going to have all the... Um, beginner stuff that you're going to want to look at. So just copy and paste that into your browser uh, after the live stream is over and uh, read those articles and you will learn the basics. Selling on Marketplace. Have shipped through the mail and UPS not much price difference. If we mail out west, it costs more than the product. We have large boxes most of the time, 24 by 26 by... Oh well, yeah, that explains it. Um, that is going to be... Uh, an expensive shipping price, 26 by 24 by 6. You're definitely going to have your cheapest prices on FedEx and UPS, unless it weighs like, unless it's, uh, prob probably, unless it's like under, under a pound, <laughs> you're going to have a better price on FedEx or UPS. And it's just going to be expensive uh, because it's a very bulky item. So uh, I, I would say look for smaller items. If USPS didn't give free priority supplies, they wouldn't have to charge so much, says Anita. I don't think you're right, Anita. <laughs> that's not true. Uh, that's not a very large portion of their of, of how much how they spend their money. If gas was free, they would have charged so much, you know? Like, there's that's not, you're, you're making uh, an assumption. Check your six. Houser says, is that worth it? Uh, do you have a video on how to list on multiple sites? Uh, like Mercari, eBay, Poshmark at the same time. I, people have been asking me to review List Perfectly. They do it for a fee, um, but I don't do it because it doesn't seem like it's worth it to me. I don't sell enough things. I don't sell enough, you know. I don't. What I don't want to do is double sell a product and get dinged to having a cancel a sale. And that that's the kind of thing that I know would happen if I if I began cross listing. Slot Fever says, I put a package in the mailbox with the flag up. Uh, mail on Sunday, no update. Scanner tracking is just a, a delay. So I, I, I do not know anything about that. Um, I don't know if... I have never put a package in my mailbox to have USPS pick it up that way. I always drive to the post office and drop it off. Or I schedule a pickup, one of the two. Check your six hustler. I find listing the same product on multiple sites a time waster. Do you use Alibaba for items to sell on Amazon? No. Or strictly items from dollar stores? No. <laughs> um, I source a whole lot of different ways, but I do not use Alibaba because the things that you're seeing on Alibaba, anyone can see. And so if you begin to start sell, selling them and, and the, the sales rank for this item begins to lower, Everyone's going to jump on the listing, and you're, you're, it's going to be a big time waste. Have you heard of some poly bag hack where you put a box in a poly bag and it costs less or something? So you can put a box in a flat rate mailer, and it'll ship for that price, but there's no instance where a poly bag with the same dimensions as a box is going to cost less. Um, I don't think. Maybe I'm forgetting something. Uh, let's see. Is Gainesville a good place to live? I lived in Tallahassee and I hated it. <laughs> That's by Gainesville. I mean, you know, relatively. Have a job offer and one place I can work is there. Indiana and Miami are the other two. Yikes. They're really making you make some hard decisions. Is it smart to list the same item on eBay and Mercari? It's smart if you can remember to cancel the listing when it sells. When is the best time, day to go to Goodwill for treasure hunting? Whenever you can go, because there's always going to be good, excuse me, good stuff there. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Sean says took 12 days for USPS priority to get from from Ohio to Michigan. Yeah, I don't think anyone is, is surprised that there are huge delays right now. 
Um, do you have any experience with Amazon Global Logistics? No, I do not. Howard Marlin says, greetings from Kalamazoo. Hey, how you doing? Could you talk a bit about stranded inventory on Amazon? Is it still just Amazon moving packages from point to point? That's a good, a large portion of it. There's also been this issue for like two years with uh, listings getting deleted and causing an inventory error and those showing up as stranded. Um, for the life of me, I cannot fix that. I have talked to Amazon hundreds of times, it feels like, uh, and I haven't got a solution for it. So most of the time it's gonna be inventory errors um, or Amazon being re uh, moved from fulfillment center to a fulfillment center. But there's also the regular reasons like a, a damaged product, you know, or um, brand restrictions or stuff like that. Uh, pirate ship does the bag in a box or bag in box. Lindy Glenn goes over it in detail. So if you can, uh, is it, is it just a regular, are the prices really different if, if you put it? Cause I know that you can, you can choose the option to use a bag. So if I go into pirate ship right now, I don't have any eBay. I did all my listings already. Uh, let's say we're going to create a label. Uh, and it goes to myself. For, uh... Okay, so if we have a nine, or let's say a, a seven by nine by three box let's see if there's any difference in between box and, and it weighs four pounds is there a difference between the box or the bag price so 786 priority mail cubic in a box Seven forty-two cubic in a bag. How? What the heck? How is that possible? So I guess it is marginally cheaper. So they must just be okay. So let, let's see if it's by one, by two. So I think what's happening. Yeah. So there is no difference. However. Because when I change my uh, partial dimensions uh, from four inches to two inches and the width, it comes out as 742 instead of 786. So what it's doing is when you do bo uh, box in a bag shipping uh, on Pirate Shipper, it's making the assumption that your, um, or if it isn't an assumption, it's just like an Amazon rule, I don't know, uh, that the... Uh, height of the shipment is only like two inches or four inches or three and a half inches or whatever the whatever the cutoff is um so if you are measuring there i can't think of an instance where a box that goes into a bag um i mean okay because let, let's let's see if it's 15 by 7 right same price which would be a big enough bag to facilitate yeah so if that's that's just kind of like a weird little it isn't even a trick. So I just went through and I checked two four pound shipments of different dimensions, uh, one box and bag, one bag. And basically, if your box is big enough to qualify for a higher amount of priority cubic rate shipping, like the cost is higher, um, it's, I w it's gonna be easier if I just show you this. So here's, here's a poly bag, right? There's there's no way that you're going to have more. Like, there, there's a mathematical equation, I'm sure, that I don't know what it is, that you can use to, uh, to figure out how much uh, of, a, of a square or a rectangle or a cube or a box you can fit in here. So, like, it's either going to be, this is a 9 by 12 poly mailer. So, it's either going to be, like, 12 by, like, 1 by 9 or, like, 12 by 9 by 4 or... Uh, 12 by 
12 by 7 by 4. I mean, it's, it's going to depend on the dimensions of this bag. And so it's not necessarily cheaper, but I think it's just like saving people the time of measuring. Um, because if you do make the poly bag dimensions big enough to fit uh, a box of a larger size, then it's going to cost you more. Um, it just, I think it just saves you time on shipping because they figure out, hey, if your poly bag is 9 by 12, the, the, you know, the max volume it's going to be is X amount of inches, cubic inches. And that's the same as a box. So I hope that was, that was probably confusing for all of you. Um, <laughs> sorry. Box in a bag is cubic on pirate ship. I've done some research on how Amazon calculates the current balance of my account, but I'm still baffled on how they how much they withhold for a period of time. Uh, no, I've not had any money withheld from me for years and years and years, but I believe that if you have a new account, they hold a certain percent for like for, for 30 days and the entire amount for two weeks. I use ShipStation to ship. Would you use this or Pirate Ship? ShipStation is fine if you like, you know, I think it's 50 bucks a month, right? That's what I was paying when I used it. Um, if you're sh shipping out like, uh, you know, batches with several hundred or several thousand, I I'd say it's better than Pirate Ship. But if you're just doing like onesie twosies um, and you're not using any sort of, I mean, the good thing about ShipStation is you can integrate, like, let's say you use um, a third party that does international shipping for a cheaper rate. You could, you could integrate that into ShipStation, and you can't do that into um, Pirate Ship. But by the same token, Pirate Ship now has their easy export rate, which is going to be pretty similar to what the uh, what, what a lot of people are getting on their export rates through... Um, I can't think of the name of the companies, but there's a lot of them out there uh, who specialize in like package forwarding. The video I watched saved her over $5, I believe. So I'm, I'm almost positive that it's, there's not a, 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 an actual trick to that. It's, um, it's just utilizing like assumptions or you know saving you time. Because if you actually measure out how big the box is gonna be, I guess you could always cram it in here, um, you know, and maybe make some more money that way. Or you could like cut this, but even then, you're, you're gonna have to measure, measure, the, uh, <laughs> measure the bag. So it's not going to be, um, I don't, I don't really think it's, I don't think it's a trick so much as just you're not measuring that third measurement and it's being mathematically calculated based on the, the height and width of the bag. I can't ship medium mail on pirate ship. Anyone else have this issue? You can ship medium mail on pirate ship. What you have to do is go back to the main page and it's a little... Under extra services, there's a little checkbox that says qualifies for media mail, and you have to check that off. If you don't have that, just talk to their customer support. They'll they'll fix it for you. Uh, have you ever purchased anything straight from China and sourced directly to Amazon? No, I have not done that. I think it's a bad idea because you don't have any of the, the quality control that you need to make sure you don't get banned. Uh, I think she did not put in the width actual. It was the width of the poly bag before filling. Yeah, so if you, there's there's no way that you can put a, uh, a, a box in here that ships for less than the bag than if you were to actually measure the whole box. I don't think. I don't think. Um, I have a bunch of boxes. Like, so let's, here's a box right here, right? Um, this is, I'd say it's about seven by, by seven by two by two, seven by two by two easily fits into this poly bag, right? So let's just, let's just, as an experiment, let's say it weighs 10 pounds, right? I've got a weight, a weight in there. That, that's a 12 by nine. Um, a 12 by 9 poly bag. So if we were to ship that in the poly bag, it would cost $7.42 to be shipped just across town. And if we were to put that in a box, and the dimensions of the box are the dimensions of the, of the actual item, 
Let's see if it costs more or, oh, more or less. No, it costs the exact same. So if this item were 10 pounds, it would cost the exact same price, whether it's in a poly bag or not. Um, you know, if we begin to, to alter the, the dimensions of this box, where it's not gonna fit inside this nine by 12 poly bag, yeah, of course it's gonna cost more, but like, let's say, can we fit a, let's say it's, you know, seven, seven inch, or we'll say eight inches. Let's say it's eight inches by five inches by five inches. That wouldn't fit in this bag. Eight inches by five by five. Let's say nine, nine by five by five. Nine by five by five. So yeah, in that instance, it's not gonna, yeah. Okay, so that definitely proves it. Uh, at least in, in like the 10 experiments, you know, the 10, the 10 trials I just went through, there's no, um, there's no price difference in box in a bag or bag because it's, you know, it's a cubic rate. And so you can't magically fit more cubic inches into a bag than a box, you know? It doesn't really work that way. Okay. Uh, so do you have a special going on for a free retail membership in this live feed? I do not have that, no. Uh, Hustler of Culture, what are your thoughts on selling modded, hacked video game consoles on eBay? I have no thoughts. Uh, Kyle Hancock says, I've been jamming 8-inch thick boxes in the bag with no problem on pirate ship. Uh, yeah. You can fit it a uh, USPS flat rate small box into a flat rate envelope and pay the flat rate envelope fee. Is that what the, what the trick is? You just get a free box? Maybe. That, might, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. You use the length and width of the poly bag that fits in the three-dimensional box, that the three, versus the three-dimensional box. It does sometimes provide a lower mailing cost. I don't think so. In the, in the, I just ran a bunch of options through there, and as long as the boxes are measured correctly, um, you can't magically fit more cubic space in, uh, into a, a bag. So I think it's pirate ship is just doing something where they, are using math to understand what the volume is um, instead of measurements. Let's see, Walter, I, I just signed up. Thank you for encouraging, encouraging me. I finally took the final step and you're on Amazon, found so many books. I'll be sending out books into Amazon soon. Good job, sounds like you're doing good work. Uh, get a shoe box. There's no way in hell I can fit a shoe box into a nine by 12 poly mailer. Um, yeah. And you know, probably I would even bet that you could lose money. So let's say we put that, we, we, we put that, um, we put that small little, little box. Oh yeah. So for envelopes larger than 18 inches on either dimension, you must use the box package type and enter in all three of your dimensions. That's the caveat as well on pirate. I just tried to put in a 25 inch by 20 by 20 inch poly bag just to show you that it costs way more. Um, let's see, 18 by an 18 by 18 poly bag that weighs 10 pounds is going to ship for $8.74. So maybe that is where it begins to to become more more um, beneficial, because if it was let's say, but it is only going across town. Eighteen by eighteen. Let's say it's twelve by nine by five. That should pretty easily fit into a uh, a, a poly bag. Eight sixty one. So I guess in some instances, I don't know how they get around doing that. If you have very large items, like big items, not small items at all like this, um, 12 by 9 by 5. What's 12 by 9 
by five. 540. 324. So I guess what they're doing is they're just taking in the dimensions of the of the actual poly bag, um, and they're not. I wouldn't think that they are. Maybe that size won't. It, it definitely would though. A 12 by 9 by 5 box would definitely fit in an 18 by 18 poly bag. Um, so I don't know. I guess there is some there is some benefit to it if you're using very if you have very large poly bags. But again, I don't know how they actually get around doing that because uh, all they'd have to do is say there's a box in this bag, you know? And if the, maybe it's a, maybe it's a caveat. Why does USPS priority rate shipping cost less for boxes and bags? Huh. So I don't see any articles on that, but I am I'm flummoxed as to why there's a price difference there. So yeah, 18 by 12.5 envelope. Yeah, it sounds like if you're selling out big shipping out big stuff, then there is um, a, a, a benefit to doing box in a bag. And it looks like based on just the different parameters I ran, uh, all they're doing is taking the, um, anybody know the cube root of 360? Seven point one four. So seven forty two, if I'm correct, seven inches by seven inches would cost the same. Huh, no, it isn't the same. So even even at the same um, cubic area, box in a bag still costs, uh, let's see, 64 cents less. I don't, that does not make any sense to me at all. Uh, I have no idea why why they do that. Eight seventy four for us. Okay, so maybe I'm getting. Maybe I think I misspoke. I have to start writing this down. Um, so where were we? I should be leaving too. But this really has caught my interest because it's a mystery. So eight seventy eight dollars and seventy four cents to ship. 364 cubic inches. Okay. At 10 pounds. No. So in this case, I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. In this instance, it's a dollar and 12 cents cheaper to actually measure the dimensions of your box and ship it if it's the same cubic volume as a bag that just with two dimensions right i mean that's not totally right we're saying we're, we're saying the bag is one inch tall right a, a, a 36 by 36 or 18 by 18 inch bag is um is one inch tall you know, maybe maybe I need to do some more research on this. Where were we? But I think, you know, whatever for whatever reason, I hope that did offer a little bit of info for you guys about how the heck this stuff works. Um, Lourdes Gonzalez says that she always saves three to six bucks when they put things in a box over over a bag. And she uses 18 by 12 and a quarter inch um, envelopes. So the, I guess the advice I can give you on this is, yes, there is going to be a price difference. I do not necessarily understand the difference um, or how my assumption is it's based on cubic volume, but I don't know the exact specifications. 
but in some instances, if you have a poly bag with the, the sides are less than 18 inches, so it can be 18 by 12 and a quarter as Lourdes uses, uh, you're gonna be saving a couple bucks on large, very heavy packages. Um, I do not know why. Maybe it has to do with the way they sort them. I don't know, it's beyond me. But I think um, it is, there, there is, there's no difference on lower items. And in some cases you're paying more if it's not a very tight fit. But if it's a tight fit in a bag, then um, I, you know, it, doesn't, it does seem like there are some cases where you do save some money. So it's worth checking it out. Uh, you should watch Lindy Glenn's video. I'm a newbie, but she explains it pretty clear. Does she talk about why there's a price difference? Because that's what I am concerned about at this point. I want to know why, despite having the same cubic volume, there are two different prices. Um, pirate sh and, it, and these are both in pirate ship, so it's not a matter of pirate ship versus eBay or whatever. It's a matter of I go into pirate ship and I type in, uh, you know, two two separate um, two separate equations. And it gets different prices, and I don't understand why. Two separate equations with the same final sum, and I don't understand why. So it looks like for a uh, for a package to ship at the same price as an 18 by 18 10 pound box poly mailer. It has to be 12 by 10 by 7. 12 by 10 by 7. That's 840. So maybe they're saying that each, each is two and a half inches tall. You know, again, I don't know, um, but I, I I would bet it has to do with the cubic volume. If the system that processes the box might stop to read the label better, but a poly bag only has one label, it would not stop as likely. That that is a that's a good a good reason why uh, Doyle. So it might be because a box has four sides it can be put on, in a poly mailer in theory only as two i again i i have no idea uh thank you for addressing every question and comment on this live feed you're an extraordinary young man thank you chris i appreciate that i bought your dvd book last night says michael one quick question when will the updated book selling book be available oh boy i delayed that and i forgot about it does it take 1200 bucks to start an fba account or did i misread something it didn't take it was free for me um i don't Maybe that was like the 1200 bucks was like the minimum uh, because you're going to have to buy $1,000 of DVDs. Maybe that's why I said that. But it, it's not a uh, – there's no money number you have to have to have an account. Chris LaBombard says, Yay, first time making a live show. Thanks for all the helpful info. No problem. Check Your Six says, No, it takes no money. The Amazon seller app costs 40 bucks a month. So if you, the, one of the fees associated with Amazon is there's a professional and a individual seller plan. When you sign up, you sign up for the professional plan first, it's 40 bucks a month, but you can downgrade to an individual plan and that's $1 a listing when it sells. And so if you're selling 20 items a month, you're only gonna pay 20 bucks when they sell. It's less than a uh, professional account. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, we're at an hour and 13 minutes. I thank you all for showing up. If you have more comments I couldn't address, put them in the, uh, put them in the comment section below. Any questions I couldn't get to, I'll answer them there. And uh, I will see you guys later, and I'll put out a video, hopefully on Friday this week, um, announcing the winners to last um, the video on how to monetize small YouTube channels. I put a, a contest in there for a $25 Amazon gift card. 
I paid out the Dollar Tree gift cards, which were actually, I just PayPal the money, uh, to Anthony and B-Dub, who won. But Anthony, if you're watching, your email address, I, it's not connected to PayPal, so I got to pay you some way still. I did not realize it'd be so hard to pay people money, but it, it, it is. That's just growing pains, though, with, with the, uh, these new contests I'm doing. So if you want to win 25 bucks, go to my last video, watch that. Uh, put the comment that I have in the question below in the video. It's a little it's a contest. I think I said, how are you going to make money doing these strategies? And then uh, probably on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, I'll upload a new video. Um, I'm not sure about what yet. Maybe I'll do this whole bag in a box thing. Maybe I'll figure that out. Uh, and then we'll announce the winners of that video then. See you guys later. Uh, don't be a shithead. And uh, have a great week. 